Welcome to Making the Case. I'm Yuri Tewalde. We start tonight with a major update in the case of Andrew Brown Jr. The 42-year-old black man shot multiple times, including once in the back of the head by sheriff's deputies in Elizabeth City, North Carolina. Today, District Attorney Andrew Womble announced charges will not be filed against the officers who shot and killed Brown last month. He says their use of force was justified. When weighing the degree of force used, a prosecutor must pay careful attention to the facts and circumstances of each particular case, including the severity of the crime at issue, whether the suspect poses an immediate threat to the safety of officers or others, and whether he is actively resisting arrest or attempting to evade arrest by flight. Using these parameters, I find that the facts of this case clearly illustrate the officers who used deadly force on Andrew Brown Jr. did so reasonably and only when a violent felon used a deadly weapon to place their lives in danger. Today was the first time the public saw the body cam footage of the shooting. We want to show you that video now so you can decide for yourself whether the force used was justified. A word of warning, the video is hard to watch. Back with me tonight is one of the attorneys for the Brown family, Chance Lynch and retired LAPD Sergeant Cheryl Dorsey. Thank you both for joining me tonight. Starting with you, Chance. We say we're never surprised by these types of announcements, but to some degree we are because we hope this time will be different. What was your immediate reaction when you heard the DA say he wasn't bringing charges against any of the officers? Well, Yodi, first let me say thank you for having me back, um, and I appreciate your interest in this. Uh, this is an important moment in, in time and history for us. Um, to be honest with you, Yodi, uh, considering the elected's comments um, and what he said, uh, considering what we saw when we saw the video, uh, to be frank with you, I wasn't extremely surprised at his position, uh, I think that uh, he went into this case with all intent to not prosecute and to hold these um, murderers accountable for what they did to Mr. Brown on that day. Um, and so uh, today he made it clear. Um, what we saw today, Yodi, was a miscarriage of justice. That's what we saw. Now, you were the only attorney allowed to watch about 18 minutes of body cam footage about a week ago, along with the Brown family. You came onto the show and you told our viewers that what you watched did not justify lethal force to be used against Mr. Brown. Yet today, the DA only showed 40 seconds of video during his press conference this morning to demonstrate why lethal force was justified. Were those 40 seconds a part of those 18 minutes you and the family watched? They were, but I want to make sure that I'm clear. We, we saw a total of 18 minutes. So it wasn't we saw 18 consecutive minutes. We saw three minutes and one second of one video, another three minutes and one second of another video, four minutes of another. So it added up to be 18 minutes, not 18 consecutive minutes. What you guys saw today, um, these two clips were a part of what uh, me, what I, along with two of Mr. Brown's sons, what we saw together on last week. And, and, and here's the thing. Um, this is the same elected DA that said initially in his comments to the court that when Mr. Brown backed up, he made contact. Then today, that, that shifted. Um, he said that there were only shots fired when he went forward. In, in the shot that you just played, um, when they went to the corner mm -hmm. of, that, of, of his car, you could hear a shot fired when he's, when, when, and then he goes back in reverse. He turns his mm -hmm. wheel away uh, to the left. You hear another shot. And then when he goes across the grass, they unload. So everything that um, we saw, uh, 
last week, you guys had a chance to see a, a huge portion of that that substantiates and corroborates exactly what we saw. I don't know what the elected DA is seeing, and I don't know where he's where he's mm-hmm. uh, what is motivating him. Yeah, we're actually going to get to that. Um, it, it's it's kind of surprising how we're watching the same footage and yet we're coming with different. Um, theories about what happened and what's justified and what isn't. Um, Cheryl, the officers fired a total of 14 shots at Brown, including one shot through the back of his head. Based on your experience as a former police sergeant and from the portion of the video shown, was the use of force justified? Well, I I think the use of force was unnecessary, but I think the officers created an opportunity to use deadly force. I mean, listen, this is an elite team, SWAT. And by the district attorney's own admission, they had been surveilling uh, Mr. Brown. They knew that he was an alleged runner. They knew that he would try to evade. And so I know from my 20 years of experience in patrol, having been involved in dynamic services of search warrants and arrests, that there's tremendous planning, pre-planning that goes into this. And so you understand when you see these officers surround his vehicle, they have now created an opportunity because he's a runner. They know he's Mm. gonna flee. It's a Mm no-win situation. And when he moves that vehicle, now one of them, if not all of them, have an opportunity to say, I perceived a threat, I was in fear for my life, and it was reasonable for me to Mm -hmm. use deadly force. They created that opportunity. And and along with that, instead of Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Chance. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You and, and along with that, what is that with what she's saying? He was known to never uh, carry a weapon, um, and so, but but one of the things Jody, that you did not hear the elect to say today, you did not hear him mention the Pasquotank County Sheriff's uh, manual and their policy regarding excessive force and the use of weapons in moving cars. It is very clear in their own policies, his deputies should not shoot at any part of a vehicle in an attempt to disable the vehicle. Uh, That's the policy. It's written. Um, In fact, it it, it goes even further, and it says that even though the North Carolina law um, and I and I pulled it because it says that even though the North Carolina law will permit the use of force, um, it says that the deputy, the Pasquotank County Sheriff's Office, are expressly prohibited from using deadly force in the situation. So here we have an an, an elected official who prides himself off of being a minister of justice and representing the people of Pasquotank County, but yet. He, he doesn't even use the rules that these uh, officers are supposed to go by. They blatantly uh, violated their rules. He, he never posed a threat. He turned his wheel at his own admission, turned his wheel to the left. He drove between them out across the grass. And as you can see, they unloaded. Now, Cheryl, you mentioned that these, the, the SWAT team, the SWAT team was basically surveilling Mr. Brown creating an opportunity for them to be able to say that their lethal force was justified. But what do you say to Chance when he says, well, even if they were surveilling him and and figuring out a way to use lethal force, what about the fact that policy says you cannot you cannot shoot at a moving vehicle, especially one that's moving away from you? Well, there's always a problem when you fire at a suspect who's behind the wheel of a car, because should you incapacitate that suspect now, we've got a vehicle that's out of control, which sounds like what was going on here. But we heard the district attorney, who has a symbiotic relationship with this police department, go to great lengths to, number one, dirty up Mr. Brown, uh, talk about things that really had nothing to do with what went on that day. Uh, He talked about how dangerous and what a a threat to the community he was, but they knew that back on March 17th and March 29th when they had that controlled by. And so if he were a danger, uh, why didn't they take him into custody then? Our job is to use deadly force as a last resort rather than a first. I don't know these officers' heart, I don't know their intent, but clearly there was something else that they could have done let him go. You know who he is. You'll catch him mm-hmm. later mm-hmm. rather than fire mm-hmm. into a vehicle as he tries to flee. I think my good my my, my new yeah. good friend here made a great point with that. 
uh, <laughs> when, when, when she said my, my new great friend, because what they did, you know, they tried to change the narrative today. That's why he spent a majority of his time creating this narrative about his previous arrest. And uh, let's be let's, let's be clear. Mr. Mr. Brown is not on trial. Um, this is not a, a, a case where we're trying to prove um, his past. Let's focus on what happened in that moment. And it is clear um, that we see that they surrounded his car, that they used excessive force. They shot a man. What threat is a man when he is going away from you? They shot him in the back mm -hmm. of his head. Mm -hmm. Now, Chance, officials are saying Brown used his car. We talked about that. You know, used his car as a weapon, and that's why they fired. Now, again, the DA played parts of the video that he believes supported his decision. It's hard to believe that we're watching the same 40 seconds of video today and, and can come up with a different conclusion than the DA. What are your thoughts? I, 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 it's puzzling to me. I think the DA, he sees what he wants to see. I, I, what, what I saw today is the same thing I saw last week. I saw a man who was afraid, who was ambushed by the police, who puts distance between he and those officers with guns in his face, who turned his will to the left, who drove out between officers if he, if he had any intent whatsoever. If there was ever a scintilla of intent to hurt someone, he had every opportunity to drive into the officers that were immediately in front of him. He chose not to do that. He was trying to save his life. Mm -hmm. And when he got away from them, mm -hmm. he went across that grass. They, they stopped in the middle of that second driveway and they unloaded their weapons, causing his demise. That's what happened. We saw a public execution. Now, you've expressed concern about the DA's relationship with the sheriff's office and a potential conflict of interest. Are you guys still pushing to have a special prosecutor appointed to this case, much like the case against Derek Chauvin? And what's the game plan moving forward? Well, going forward, we filed a petition today at around 3 o'clock. Our petition is for the court to order a release of all of the body cam, audio, anything dealing with uh, Mr. Brown on that day. Um, that, that he was shot and killed by Pasquotank County Sheriff's Department. So we found that we've also, uh, along with that motion, uh, we've also uh, petitioned the court to um, order a release of the SBI report. Uh, the, the elected today never talked about the conclusion uh, of the SBI. We don't know what the SBI decided. We only heard, in my opinion, this is what I think. Well, we we want to know what the SBI said. And so initially, that's what we filed today. I can tell you uh, that this is not over. Just because the elected failed to do his job, it doesn't mean that we're going to hang up our hat. So you can absolutely uh, count on a federal lawsuit coming. Um, we're going to do everything that we can, warranted by law, to uh, to represent this family and so that we can hold these individuals accountable, even though um, the one who has taken the oath to protect and to serve and to enforce and abide by the Constitution has failed to do that today. Cheryl, quickly, um, we've seen portions of this body cam video. Um, should the entire body cam footage be released to the public? Well, you know, I don't know if that the public has a need to know. Certainly they want to know. But, you know, the problem here, as I see it, is that it's going to be very difficult to argue and debate what's in those officers' head, their perception. And we heard the district attorney speak to that at great lengths today. That same uh, reasonableness, that same perception, we never see when it's a white officer dealing with an armed white man. Uh, they never perceive threat the same way they do when they're dealing with an unarmed black man. And we've got examples of that. Walter Scott, Sam DeBose, Ryan Twyman here in Los Angeles and others. And we have the contrary uh, example in uh, Adam Freen, uh, Ryan Dylan Roof, uh, Nicholas Cruz, mm -hmm. white men who were armed to the teeth and were taken into uh, custody how? Without incident. And so wouldn't it be nice if that same uh, standard of reasonableness was used when they're dealing with people who look like me. All right, attorney for the Brown family, Chance Lynch, and retired thank LAPD you. Sergeant Cheryl Dorsey, thank you both. Thank you. Thank you.